It has been two weeks since I put these sweet potatoes in jars of water and this is what's happened. I wanted to give you an update. First of all, you can tell that I put these in much larger water containers. These are half gallon ball mason jars. They're, they're wide mouth. They're often difficult to find. I've got a link below this video where you can get these mason jars. But they are great for these sweet potatoes. The reason why I bumped them up to the larger jars is because the roots were getting so big they were just a big ball in the bottom of the small jar. And I was concerned about them getting what we call root bound or something like that. I just want to give them more room to grow. If they've grown that much in two weeks, I can't imagine how many roots there's going to be in there when I pull these out in May or so. What's interesting is that they were all planted the same day, all planted in the same rainwater. If you don't have rainwater and you just have potable tap water, just let it sit out for 24 hours and let the chlorine out of the water. This over here, this sweet potato, has no roots at all. It just has kind of a little fuzz down here and it is still growing slips. As you can see here, we've got about a half a dozen slips on there. They're small, but they're still growing. It's quite interesting to see that happen. It'll be interesting to see if this gets roots in the next couple weeks. This one here has one main root and all these smaller roots are coming off that one root and its slips are bigger and there are more of them. And then this sweet potato over here has lots of roots coming from several different places on the sweet potato. And it seems like the further I put the sweet potato down in the water, the more roots will grow. So, so I decided to only put about half of the potato in the water because I think we'll still get slips from around the sides here also. Now you can see here these slips are much better developed, much larger than the other potatoes. I simply think it's because they have a, a larger root mass. Something else I've been doing is I'm growing these inside on the south side of my house. This window right here behind here faces due south. So I think that helps. Sweet potatoes really like warmth and that's why I'm waiting till May to plant them outside. And so what I have here is I'm sharing a heat mat with my wife. She's got her tomatoes on here that also like warmth and also her peppers. So I have my sweet potatoes actually back here on the heat pad keeping them warm. So here's an example of the jar that I did have them in. You can see the difference in the, in the size of the jar. In addition to having them on the south side of the house, trying to get as much natural light as I can, having them on the heat pad, we also have these jump start grow lights inside here. And I think that's really a key to helping them grow well. So with this kind of combination of elements, I think it's really helping the potatoes grow. One thing I have had several people ask is, are these organic potatoes? Are they sprayed with something in the grocery store? And the really nice thing about this is you can actually look on the potato and see a label. And this particular label says 94816. There are four different numbers that you want to be aware of. If the first number is three and four, it means it's been traditionally grown which means it, it can have chemical pesticides and herbicides uh, used in the growing process, which of course may be absorbed into the food itself. Number nine means it's organic. There are no chemical pesticides or herbicides or chemicals used in the growing of the potato or the product at all. And if there's the number eight, that means it is a GMO, genetically modified organism, it has genes from other organisms mixed with the plant itself. Just remember primarily three and four is traditional. They were probably grown with chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides. Eight is GMO and nine is organic. An easy way to remember that. Eight I hate. Nine is fine. Now these smaller numbers actually mean a specific variety of the product. And so I went and looked up 94816 and it tells me that this is the sweet potato Jules variety, which is great because it is the queen of sweet potatoes. It has the best flavor, the highest yields, and is the number one produced potato in the United States. So anytime you see a label, 
even if you're in the grocery store, you could probably just type in the product. I just did a search for a sweet potato 94816, brought up a website and told me exactly what this potato is. So it's good to know what your PLU codes mean when you're out shopping, especially if you're trying to buy produce to plant in your garden. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope the things that we're doing with the heat map, the grow lights, and the southern exposure help you understand. Uh, the also using the rainwater or the tap water that's been sitting out for 24 hours. I try to share every detail that I do in these things so you can replicate them. And if you're doing something different and you're getting better results, you can let us know so that we all learn together. I am very optimistic with these potatoes. They're looking great. It'll be interesting to come back in two weeks and give you an update and see if, if this has any root growth at all and what the slips look like. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And if you buy organically grown produce at your grocery store, you will be able to grow the same plant in your garden and be able to produce your own food for a fraction of the cost of buying the fruit or produce in the grocery store. And have the joy of doing it.